here, ladies and gentlemen. This is Jock here. Welcome to Deadly Departed. And I've just knocked something over there, but never mind. If you're new here, then uh, thank you for joining us. And uh, if you're a returning subscriber, then of course, thank you for joining us. It's been a while since I've been here. And when we come right back, we're actually going to talk about how to find out who your guide is and how to find out the name of your spirit guide. I was asked this question by a lovely woman called Nancy, and um, I'm doing this for her. So this also helps many other people as well. So when we come right back, we're going to get right into it. God bless. Welcome back, guys. Uh, this is Jock here from Deadly Departed. Nancy asked a, a, a question, it was the how does she know the name of her guide or how does anybody know the name of your guide? And a lot of people make this really convoluted and unnecessarily complicated. The complicated aspect of it exists where it, you have to develop a relationship over a long period of time and you do not just accept the first answer you get or accept anything. Anybody who tells you your guide is this and your guide is that and here's the name, you should take it with a pinch of salt because you don't know if it's coming from their own ego. You don't know if they're making it up. You know, there's no evidence with it. When I first uh, found out who my guide was, it was a bit of a different situation. I was in trance at the time and I was out and it came through and other people verified it, but I still didn't accept it until afterwards. And I still wanted to get as much information and proof as possible. So I went on a quest, if you like, of getting that information. So the simplified aspect of, you know, finding out who your guide is, is very simple to ask, asking meditation, asking your mind. But the important thing is not just to accept accept it. Don't just accept it. Whatever you hear, first of all, that's your guide. Don't just accept it because your mind can also create, you know, your, your subconscious or your conscious mind can create what you, what you're drawn to. You know, if you really love North American Indians, you might all of a sudden just create yourself a name of an Indian and there's no other evidence that goes with it. Um, or you may think it's one of your loved ones and you just, you know, you're so desperate to hear from them. So you just create the name or you, you, you create that vision of your loved one and you accept them as your guide. Always be a remember, and, and you know I'm a great proponent of trying to tell people that the the afterlife is a dangerous place if you don't know what you're doing because no matter what people think there's negative spirits and there's good spirits you know as I've said many many things we wouldn't know good unless we knew evil we we need to have polar opposites so that we continually learn and we continually grow so if you accept just anything as your guide, you accept anyone as your guide, then you could get yourself into a lot of trouble. And since my other videos, I've had a lot of, of a lot of emails and a lot of uh, people have contacted me saying that they never, they, they just accepted anything or people told them who their guides were and before long they were finding themselves in trouble. And um, that's something I don't want you to do. But the simplified, the simplified version of, of how to ask who your guide is, is just to ask. There's no real secret or, or or, or any magic or you know the, the a ritual that can do that in meditation however I will at some point I'll be developing a meditation that will help to train your mind and it will help you a little bit more with the recognition of the energy of your guide and the recognition and the, the various aspects of that but the important thing is that when you ask you must not expect that it's going to come instantly and you must be prepared to wait. But the important thing is what I did is I, I asked for at least three pieces of evidence that came over a period of time. And that's something that you should do. You should ask for a piece of evidence. You should ask for the evidence of that guide. And I, and, and don't just make it up, you know, don't just say, you know, I'm looking for a, you know, if this is really you, then, then you accept anything. I mean, it's very difficult because people do accept anything. They'll think that a, a picture in the cloud is their guides or they'll think, and that's pareidolia in, in all reality, or they think that they, they hear something or someone says something and then they just ex expect it they just you know they just take that on board and that's their guide the reality is is that when you ask for evidence you ask for information from your guide if your guide is connected with you you're developing a relationship over a long period of time then you will get evidence your evidential information from that spirit guide okay and yes, spirit guides are 90% of the time are already, they've already incarnated on earth and they're serving in spirit as, as a guide. There can be times where the guide hasn't incarnated and there's other aspects to that spirit guide, okay? And don't believe that your guide is Jesus or Mary or something like that because why in good God's name would Jesus be your guide? You know, it's, I've seen this lots and lots of times. I've seen people claim Buddha as their guide. It's just, it just doesn't happen, okay? That's for another uh, video. But 
think about uh, you know the relationship that you're building with your guide and think about how that evidence will come to you and it could be in the series of books that you receive information or a word or a statement or phrase it could be images it could be in your dreams it will be over a period of time but the important thing is is that the the consistency of the information will link in like a jigsaw puzzle there will be an energetic pattern to it there will be an intelligent pattern to it and and the other important aspect of it is is it will hit you in your mind body and soul you will just no, and, and it won't mean anything to anybody else, but it will mean something to you. Don't put too much emphasis on I have to know who my guide's name is, because they, they really don't care about that either. A, a lot of the times when we're developing, uh, we're developing spiritually or we're developing mediumship, we put too much emphasis in, in trying to figure out who our guide is and, and trying to figure out what their names are. We then hold ourselves back because we're so desperate to know this piece of information that it can often be a negative thing. And I don't mean like evil or anything, but it's often be a negative thing in your mind because it makes you feel bad. It makes you feel that you're not doing well. It makes you feel that you're not developing. It makes you feel that you're not growing because you can't get the name of your guide straight away. Your relationship with your spirit team happens over a number of years. It happens over a long period of time. And they, they've been, they, they know about you ever since, you know, you, you've incarnated on this earth and you those spirit guides that have been assigned to you for a reason, have been assigned to you for a job to help them develop as well as you. Okay. So it's like in the dating scene. Okay. You don't just marry someone the minute you meet them within the first couple of hours, okay? You get to know them. Yes, I mean, some people, you know, Joe and I got married fairly quickly, but, you know, we did get to know each other. We did date. We did learn about each other. We recognized that our energies were, were compatible. Our vibration was compatible. So don't just jump into bed with the first guide that you, that, that you come across or that someone tells you. Uh, you just ask them in your meditation. You ask them in your prayers. You ask them who they are and to give you evidence. And that evidence has to have a pattern. And that evidence has to mean something to you. And in time, it will all come together and you'll know exactly who they are. And it could be that someone says something to you. They won't say your guide is this because I don't believe in that. I don't think that's the right thing to do. But someone may all of a sudden, you could be sitting in a coffee shop and you're just, you know, you're working away maybe on your computer, your laptop and, and someone's reading a book on, I don't know, North American Indians or Egyptians or something like that. And you strike up a conversation and they message, you know, they, they mention something to you. They start talking to you about it. They mention a name or whatever and boom. You feel it in your heart. You feel it in your soul. That's that's the type of feeling you want to get. Not just that a feather's going to drop out midair or a medium's going to say, this is who your guide is. You shouldn't, shouldn't even accept that from a medium. They can, they can guide you into learning who your guide is through a process of your own spiritual development, but they shouldn't tell you who they are. You need to find that out yourself by developing your own relationship. As I said, I will be doing a meditation and some prayers to help you to understand and to connect with your guides, to find your guides. But what I want you to do is not put so much emphasis that you actually, you, you're desperate to know. Be excited about the journey and be excited that you're you're developing a relationship and ask them in your meditation. And it may come in your dream. Ask them in your meditation. Ask them in your prayers. It may come in your dream and you'll start to build this pattern together. And before long, you'll know who your guide is. Very simple, guys. Nothing magical, nothing really hard. It's just learning a process of discernment and not just accepting anything because you don't want to accept any negative spirit out there as your guide and, you know, have the, the consequences that comes with that. So just be careful, but recognize that it's not a hard thing to do and it just takes time, spiritual development and vibrational harmony. God bless, ladies and gentlemen. If you've got any questions, please ask away. I'm happy to teach and I shall speak to you all soon. Next week, we are going to talk about psychic protection. God bless.